pictures. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka! Alley-oop! Come on, jump! <laughs> See ya, Tom Thomas! It's time for us to go to school! See you later, Animal Tamer! Great job, Chusaka! Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R... What's the lesson? Hm. Someone's late again! Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Ugh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. 
And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, although... That's great, so let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. The drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to, but the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. Nolik, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm, so it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry, it's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Can you hear that? It stopped buzzing. 
It did. Hey, everybody, it's Nolik. Yo, what's up? So, our noisy ghost is back. I thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group. And when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Suka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. Like I told you, no more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. <gasps> so you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? A coffee grinder? Mm. No. A hole puncher? <laughs> mm. Is it a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? There we go, that's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. <laughs> Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way, too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. 
The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh.